hello everyone and welcome back to the channel sorry for this long delay i was preparing to give you the best details possible i hope you can forgive me this time i promise that i'll be regular and increase my pace moving on and the previous episode of road to aws had a lot of information that was squeezed in so i wanted to divide it into separate sections and if you feel i am moving a bit fast or slow please do let me know in the comment section below uh, so that I can change that as per your requirements in the next one. Now, in today's episode is also a very special one as well because in today's session of AWS we will be jumping into elastic block stores and I might divide them into multiple parts as well to make it more consumable. So make sure you check all the episodes. Okay, so if you're ready, let's begin. And in today's episode of Road to AWS, we will be discussing about what is block storage, what is the difference between block and file storage, what is network storage, and uh, what are the AWS Elastic Block Storage volumes type, and what are the EBS snapshots. And further on, we will be moving on to the AD EBS volume migration, EBS encryption for volumes, what are the differences between EBS and the instance stores, how to configure EBS rate configurations, what is AWS EFS, the Elastic File Store, and it's hands-on. What are the differences between EFS and EBS? We will be covering all of them and we'll be having a hands-on demo on each of them. So let's begin. Uh, so let's start off with the vision about block storage. And before moving to AWS Elastic Block Storage, let's understand what is the actual idea behind block storage. So have you ever shifted from one place to another? maybe within the city or outside the city, you would have packed your things, put them in a logistic vehicle like a truck or a mini truck. To pack things, you need boxes, right? Let's imagine we have got boxes and every box that you have has a certain size, right? Isn't it? So let's suppose the size of the boxes is about 50 liters. And there are boxes for each of the rooms that you have, isn't it? So, so as you can pack them accordingly. Now that you have reached your new home, you are shocked. The logistic people have dropped the boxes and they have left. It's all mixed up and you, and you scream, where is my stuff, dude? And then you realize you had asked the logistic people to mark the boxes with the name of the room from which the boxes were packed. So it's so easy to find the blocks when they have been properly marked, isn't it? So that is what happens when you use block storage. It's so funny. It's like I'm promoting AWS block storage, elastic block storage itself, but that's how interesting it is. So when anyone asks you about, hey, do you know block storage? Imagine this room, which in computing network terms, think of a storage area network, where you have blocks of storage of a specific capacity, which you can use for your storage needs. You can see here, we have a storage area where we have blocks of storage with 512 gigabytes and block storage provides fixed sized raw storage capacity. Each storage volume can be treated as an independent disk drive and controlled by an external server operating system. This block device can be mounted by the guest operating system as if it were a physical disk. And the block storage is the most commonly used storage types for most applications and it can be either locally or network attached and are typically formatted with file systems like FAT32, NTFS, EXT3 and EXT4. So I wanted to give you a real time example here. Imagine you are editing videos and they are all around like 4K and 8K videos. You cannot store all of your videos or raw files that uh, they would be around like 30 to 40 GB per file, isn't it? Like Marcus Brown leaders from MKBHD. He stores them in an array of hard drives with 10 terabyte each with a whole system around it. With block storage, files are split into evenly sized blocks of data, each with its own address with no additional information or metadata to provide more context for what the block of data is. So with block storage, you get an address as the only metadata for your access and that's how you can get connected. So as you can see in the visual here as well, the data has been divided into different blocks of capacity and it has a unique address to it. And the best thing is it's virtual. So you can have as many as you want, but you got to pay for what you use. 
it's not free isn't it so in retrospect block storage is a type of data storage that stores data in volumes or blocks so as the name block storage which acts as a individual hard disk drive so each storage block has its own file system and parks different information types within partitions or between partitions so this is a brief introduction for the block storage and i hope you got the idea of how block storage works and this is not what you learn in any solutions architect course but i felt why not go deep and discuss and have fun with this i hope you're all liking it let's move on so it's not that we have only block storage and there is another storage option that you would have probably used in your daily life this is the file storage i hope everyone remembers out here what file storage is it's pretty simple you have a folder where you store your files it can be a nested folder as well where you need to iterate the folder path to reach the file like we do in our operating systems like we use uh, like the windows the mac or the linux let's see what are the differences between block and file storage so the block storage slices data into blocks as we already discussed and in file storage we have a file level or file based storage so if you have a file then you can store it accordingly into folders or segments so each block of data on the block storage side is divided into or is given a unique identifier so the address that we had it's the only metadata that you're going to get on the file storage side uh, that you have data is stored as a single piece of information inside a folder and blocks of data can be stored across multiple location because you can move the blocks across multiple regions by creating snapshots or copying them and for file storage you need to know the path to find it so uh, in every example that you have like let's suppose we take for windows operating system if your file is stored inside c drive program files you need to iterate to that path and find the file so usually deployed in storage area networks the block storage usually is the block storage which actually is a virtual storage environment needs to be deployed in a storage area network so that it has a computing environment along with it for faster access and here in the file storage it is obviously faster for user to navigate because if they need know the path then they can as well use it or access it faster in the block storage side it is faster to access blocks rather than files with path uh, because if you know what the address is you don't have to search for the file and or the block so you need to add more capacity to increase the file store as we already know uh, and block storage helps you with deploying huge databases hierarchical storage with folders file accessed with paths so there will be a hierarchical storage path that will you will get with file storage because it can be a nested folder as well but you need to know the path to access it uh, block storages can be expensive because every block that you have comes with a fixed capacity which you can increase or decrease but it uh, you have to pay for the block of capacity that you are uh, currently using and not the amount of data that you're consuming right now so it's a bit expensive than the file storage let's move on so we have discussed what block storage and what is file storage but let us get into the real deal why was there a need for the block storage in aws let's see we have our three instances and each of them have precious data of ours that we are currently working on accidentally one of the instances gets terminated and the other one goes down with the power outage that's a very hard pill to swallow you see what happened there with no persistent storage we lose data when there is a power outage or if it gets terminated and that is our rescue when you are in trouble persistent storage is the solution and that's where aws elastic block store comes in handy so even though you terminate or even though there is a power outage you won't lose data with elastic block storage that's the beauty of it so when you are in trouble persistent storage is the solution so amazon elastic block storage or ebs is a block storage system used to store persistent data so if you don't want to lose your data then make sure you use this it is an easy to use high performance block storage service designed for use with amazon elastic compute cloud that is the ec2 for both throughput and transaction intensive workloads at any scale it can be attached to your instance when you run it making it reliable and persistent and it is a network drive not a physical drive so it's not a physical entity that you can get it's a network drive and it can be provisioned as per uh, your needs so it is attached to an availability zone and uh, you can create snapshots to move it across availability zones as well 
and you pay for what you provision not the capacity that you use so if you provision 10 gb you pay for the whole 10 gb and not the amount that you use remember two terms gb and iops iops basically is input output operations per second and the next thing that i want you to remember is you can scale them when the demand increases and that is why it is called elastic so let's visually analyze this because here in our videos we promise to visualize things and it would really be sad if we don't do that isn't it so the beautiful thing about aws ebs is that each block volume is independent and they can be attached and detached anytime that you want and can be attached to any other instance without a stench so we here we have four ebs volumes and we can and we have one ec2 instance and you can see we can attach one or more volumes to it and we can as well detach it and attach it to the other one when we need it so remember with block storage files are split into evenly sized block of data each with its own address but with no additional information or metadata to provide more context for what the block of data is so with block storage you get an address as the only metadata for your access and that's how you get connected so as you can see in the visual as well the data has been divided into a different block of capacity and it has a unique address to it and the best thing is it's virtual so you can have as many as you want but you have to pay for it it's not free so this is a brief introduction for elastic block storage I hope you got the idea of how this works. Let's move on to the benefits of AWS EBS volumes and let's see what are the advantages of using AWS Elastic Block Store. So we have the benefits tree and we have most of the benefits covered. So the first thing we have is performance for any workload. So SSD backed options that are a part of EBS include a volume designed for high performance applications and a general purpose volume that offer strong price performance for most workloads. So hard disk drive backed volumes are designed for large sequential workloads such as big data analytics and log processing and data warehousing. So we have best of both worlds when it comes to performance. And the second one that we have here is ease to use or easy to use. The Amazon EBS volumes are easy to create, use, encrypt and protect. Elastic volumes capability allows you to increase storage, tune performance and uh, change volume types without any disruption to your workloads. So when it comes to backups as well, EBS snapshots allow you to easily take backups of your volumes for geographical protection of your data. As it is stuck to a particular AZ, you can create a snapshot and copy to the AZ that you want and you can use it. When you get a chance, go through the Data Lifecycle Manager or the DLM. It is an easy to use tool for automating snapshot management without any additional overhead or cost. So third one that we have here, which is my favorite, high availability and durability. Each volume is designed to protect against failures for replicating within the availability zone or the AZ. Uh, offering around 99.999% availability and an annual failure rate or AFR to between 0.1% to 0.2%. Five nines or 99.999% availability means 5 minute, 15 second or less downtime in a year. Or if you are really ambitious, shoot to six nines or 99 dot nine 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 percent availability which allows you 32 seconds or less downtime per year otherwise four nines or nine nine dot nine nine percent allows you to have 52 minutes 36 seconds downtime per year you can see this in wikipedia or online as well where the differences between the four nines and the five nines and the six nines they give a comparatively better understanding of what the downtimes they provide and basically the amount of nines that you increase it actually decreases the downtime that you have so with five nines you get around five minutes and 15 seconds or less with six nines you get around 32 seconds and with four nines that you have you get 52 minutes and 36 seconds downtime per year so moving on the fourth one is virtually unlimited scaling so Amazon EBS enables you to increase the storage without any description of your critical workload 
and build applications that require as little as a single GB of storage or scale up to petabytes of data, all in just a few clicks. So this is one of the major advantages that we have as well. And the fifth point is security. Security is very important, isn't it? So EBS is built to be secure for data compliance. When you think of security in computing terms, we think of what? Yes, encryption. So newly created EBS volumes can be encrypted by default with a single setting in your account. And EBS volumes support encryption of data at rest, data in transit, and all volume backups. EBS encryption is supported by all volume types, including uh, which includes built-in key management infrastructure and has zero impact on performance. So, so when, you, when you think of security, uh, it really helps to have features like this. And last but not the least, the most important point for the companies as well, that is the cost effectiveness. And as a solutions architect, you will also need to be sure about the cost effectiveness as well. So EBS offers four different volume types at various price points and performance benchmarks, enabling you to optimize cost and invest in a precise level of storage for your application needs. So understand the point here, backups using EBS snapshot are incremental and save on storage cost by not duplicating data. So this is a bit tricky, isn't it? But don't worry, we will discuss this in details in some time. So stay tuned. So let's talk about the type of block storage options we have in AWS. So EBS allows you to create volumes and attach them to Amazon EC2 instances. We have all seen how it does in the diagrams before. Once attached, you can create a file system on top of these volumes, uh, run a database or use them in any other way you would want to use your block storage. And EBS volumes are placed in a specific availability zone where they are automatically replicated to protect you from the failure of a single component. Having said all this, EBS volumes is one of the most important concept for the exam. And there are a lot of questions that come in the exam from EBS. So please pay full attention to this. So Amazon EBS provides a range of options that allow you to optimize storage performance and cost for your workloads. And they have been divided into two different categories. SSD backed storage for transactional workloads such as database and boot volumes and hard drive based storage for throughput intensive workloads such as map reduce and log processing. So SSD backs are the ones you would associate with IOPS, input output operations per second and hard disk drive backed are the ones that you associate with MB per second or megabytes per second. And we all know that the price of SSD is higher than hard drives and it's not different here in AWS EBS as well. And obviously SSDs are faster than hard disk drives. If you want to know why SSDs are faster than hard disk drives, please put that in the comment. We will make a separate video on this and visually discuss on how it is. Uh, we have discussed most of the things, but you remember it's called elastic block storage. So elastic volumes or being elastic in the volumes is a feature of Amazon EBS that allows you to dynamically increase capacity, tune performance and change the type of live volume with no downtime or performance impact. This allows you to easily right size your deployment and adapt to the performance changes. And here we will just get a short introduction on the type of storage options and we will discuss all this in depth in the later sections as well. So the first one that we have is provision IOPS SSD, which is called the IO1 volume, which is the best SSD backed volumes that we have, which is the IOPS intensive one. IO1 is backed by a solid state drive and it is and is the highest performance EBS storage option designed for critical IO intensive databases and application workloads as such uh, as well as throughput intensive database and data warehouse workloads such as HBase and Cassandra. So the volume size that you get here is 4 GB to 16 terabytes. The max IOPS per volume is around 64,000 and the max throughput per volume is about 1000 MB per second and the max IOPS per instance is 80,000 max throughput per instance is around 2375 MB per second. So remember this for IO1, it's the highest performance SSD back storage type and provides very good throughput per volume. Second one is general purpose SSD or the GP2 volume. It's a reasonably good SSD backed volume and GP2 is the default EBS volume type for Amazon instances 
or the EC2 instances. These volumes are backed by solid state drives and are suitable for a broad range of transactional workloads, including development, testing environments, low latency transaction workloads and uh, boot volumes as well. So the volume size that you get here is 1 GB to 16 terabytes compared to 4 GB uh, to 16 in IO1. The max IOPS that you have per volume is around 16,000. Max throughput per volume is around 250 Mbps. Max IOPS per instance is around 80,000 and max throughput per instance is around 2,375. So remember the, that when working with EC2, GP2 type volumes can be used for boot volumes. The third point that we have here and we are moving forward with the HDD type storage, uh, the throughput optimized HDD or the ST1. The ST1 is backed by hard disk drive and is ideal for frequently accessed throughput intensive workloads with large data set and large IO sizes such as MapReduced, Kafka, Log Processing, Data Warehouse, and ETL workloads. These volumes deliver performance in terms of throughput measured in megabytes per second. And these are basically low cost hard drive volume designed for frequently accessed throughput intensive workloads. So you can use them for big data, data warehousing, and log processing. And the volume size that you get here is 500 GB to 16 terabytes. Max IOPS per volume is 500. Max throughput per volume is 500 again, and max IOPS per instance is around 80,000, and max throughput per instance is around 2,375 megabytes per second. So the last one that we have for the hard drive based uh, storage option is the cold HDD or what we call as the SC1. So SC1 is backed by HDDs and provide the lowest cost per GB of all the EBS volume types. It is ideal for less frequently accessed workloads with large cold data sets. So, so remember that it's the lowest cost HDD volume designed for less frequently accessed workloads. Less frequently means like old logs and reports which you access rarely, in other words less frequently. Cold data or the infrequent data that you have requires fewer scans per day. So that is why it is also called as a less frequent one. And the volume size that you get here is 500 GB to 16 terabytes. Max IOPS per volume is 250. Max throughput per volume is around 250 Mbps. Max IOPS per instance is 80,000. And max throughput per instance is around 2,375 MB per second. So now that we have discussed all the things that we need to know about EBS, I mean, not all, but the theoretical part, let's move on to the interesting part. Let's get a hands-on demo for AWS EBS or Elastic Block Store. So if you're ready, let's move on.